Hi there, welcome and welcome back to our channel. My name is Mommy G. This is a leaf of an alocasia macroriza plant and these are some of its berries. Today, we'll take some of these berries and propagate the plant by seeds. So, come join us and we hope that you will learn something. Alocasia macrorhizus belongs to the arum family and is commonly known as giant taro. This rhizomatous evergreen perennial have leaves that resembles the ears of an elephant. That's why it's also named elephant ear plant. Its leaf is prominently veined, ruffled, and are arrow-shaped at the bases and stand upright. It is native to Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and Queensland. And in the Philippines, it has been cultivated a long time ago. This plant can be found in parks and gardens, in swimming pool sides, or it can be used as a focal plant. In your home. Giant taro plant can grow up to 12 to 15 feet high so that's about 3.6 to 4.5 meters tall and 6 to 8 feet wide 1.8 to 2.4 meters wide so it can grow really big. Like most alocasia this plant likes the shade. It can tolerate the morning and afternoon sun. In the Philippines, it grows well when directly planted in the soil, the garden soil. Alocasia macrorhiza can be propagated by plant division, by rhizome cuttings, stem cuttings, and by seeds. Today we will share with you how to propagate this plant by seeds. Alocasia macrorhiza produces flowers or inflorescence during the warm seasons. Here we have a fresh inflorescence and that's how it looks like. We have a lot of dried up inflorescence as well. As you can see, there are numerous flowers that have dried up. These flowers need to be pollinated for the berries to form. And usually, pollination is by insects or it can also be done by hand. After successful pollination, the flowers develop small round berries like this one. Here we have some red berries. These berries start out as green and ripens into red for this variant. We will gather some of these berries that are mature and use the seeds to propagate new plants. Here you can see that the brown things round things are the seeds and the reddish ones flesh are the berries we place these berries in a small pot with a medium of 100 percent carbonized rice hull then we place it in an area that is shaded and ensure that the medium is wet after 14 days we can see some of the seeds are germinating or producing tiny plants. We keep the soil moist and observe the development of the tiny plant on the succeeding days. This is day 17. 
we can see more of the green part and as the day goes by the leaves started to show this is our plant on the 19th day note that not all of the seeds will germ germinate at the same time we have some seeds that are not yet showing any new plant and that is okay we continue to take care of this little plant make sure that the soil is moist and it receives some indirect sunlight this is our plant on the 21st day there you have it we have successfully grown an alocasia macrorhiza from seed and this is our seedling on the 21st day the species name Macrorhiza is derived from Greek and Latin roots. Macro means large in Greek and Rhiza means roots in Latin. The name Alocasia Macrorhiza is used to describe a species within the Alocasia genus with large fleshy stems and prominent underground root system. Some variant of alocasia macrorhiza do not produce seeds and can be propagated in other ways only. Let me also show you other varieties of alocasia macrorhiza. This is the variegata which has leaves that have cream and green variegations. As you can see, this variegation is also evident in its stalk. Previously, this type of alocasia mycorrhiza is expensive in the Philippines during the pandemic, especially. Now, after the pandemic, the cost of the ornamental plants have significantly reduced. And for this one, I bought this for about just four US dollars, this size already. If you buy this during the pandemic, this could have cost you about thousands of pesos, which would translate to 20 US dollars or more. The variegations on the leaf starts out yellowish or creamy and then as the leaf ages the variegation eventually turns creamy or more into the white color and you can also see some hints of gray in the leaf or very light light green and of course the green color which is the usual color of the leaf of a macrorhiza. This one is still a baby. This is our alocasia metallica, which has purplish or almost black veins and a glossy, almost metallic-like leaf. Ours is still quite small, but this variety can grow quite big as well. This one is the New Guinea Gold variant which is characterized by a glossy leaf and patches and blotches of gold variegations or yellow variegation on its leaf. Its vein is also yellow. Let's also look at the underside of this leaf. As you can see the veins of this leaf is very prominent and actually makes the leaf very, very attractive. You can see the specks of yellow at the underside and of course more at the front of the leaves. We will continue to take care of this until this little tiny plant grow bigger and then we can transplant them in the soil that's it we hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something 
for more plant videos, we invite you to check out our channel and subscribe as well. Stay safe and healthy and see you in our next video. Bye for now!